Welcome to another Vengeance Producer Suite Phalanx video. In this tutorial, I'll be explaining the modulation matrix, the mod envelope, and the LFOs. So what is the modulation matrix? The mod matrix lets you connect control sources to phalanx parameters. You select a source, such as your mod wheel, then the amount of modulation, and finally a target, the parameter you want to modulate. Phalanx has a wide range of possible sources. Clicking on a source field opens a context menu containing all the available modulation sources. Among others, you can choose the MIDI control sources mod wheel, pitch bend, velocity, or a MIDI continuous controller. All Phalanx envelopes, the Phalanx LFOs, which we'll deal with shortly, the three GUI modifier controls you can see below the mod matrix, various automation sources that Phalanx can receive directly from the sequencer, as well as a bunch of math sources, such as random numbers, incrementing or alternating values. For now, let's select the mod wheel as our modulation source. The amount control is bipolar, meaning you can set negative as well as positive values. The values are percentages. 100% always sends a target parameter to its maximum possible value. Next, we select a target. The options here are all of Phalanx's parameters. There are so many that they are sorted into submenus. Let's choose the target pitch modifier for the sample A slot of our current sample pad. If we now move the mod wheel, we can hear the modulation effect. Let's change the source from mod wheel to LFO1 and have a look at the LFO page. Phalanx shows us two independent LFOs. But right now we're only interested in LFO1, the source we chose for the modulation. Let me show you some of the LFO functions now. Offset shifts the LFO upwards or downwards. Shape lets us choose one of several preset waveforms. Rate is the speed of the LFO. Of course, this could be a host synchronized value. Phase shifts the LFO wave along the time axis. And re-trigger determines how the LFO is restarted. In free run mode, the LFO runs continuously, even if you aren't playing any notes. In first note mode, the LFO is only restarted on the next note after all previous notes have been released. And all notes means the LFO is restarted with each and every note you play. Let's go back into the Mod Matrix page now and change the source for the pitch modulation to GUI Modifier 1. We'll also use another modulation slot for the reverb mix. First, we need to create the reverb effect. and set the mix, the parameter we'll be modulating upwards, to 0%. We're using GUI modifier 1 again as the source, and reverb mix as the target. Now that reverb has been added to the effects rack, all reverb parameters appear in the list of modulation targets. Set the modulation amount to 50%, and let us switch on the arpeggiator. Now we can give the GUI modifier a more suitable name. Note that the name of the source in the matrix is updated accordingly. 
When the GUI modifier is turned, you can hear that it controls both modulation assignments at the same time, pitch and reverb mix. This is how complex modulation is done in Phalanx. Let's take it further. Change the source from GUI Modifier 1 to Mod Envelope and switch the arpeggiator off. We can also create a third modulation assignment. Mod Envelope modulates the lo-fi parameter of the sample pad. With amount set to 75%, the result could sound something like this. The mod envelope can also be looped, turning it into a highly flexible LFO, especially because you can synchronize it to the song tempo. Let's finish this tutorial in style by modulating the loop points of a vocal sample. First, we go into the loop editor and set the loop points. I'd like to use the mod envelope to reduce the size of the looped region, so we select mod envelope again as the source and loop end position as target. Let's set the amount to a negative value because we want to reduce the size of the region. Now it sounds like this. I let the clock 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 clock